Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of The Green Locavorous Dilemma. Today, in an effort to save plastic and get toxic chemicals out of our home for our little baby, we are going to make homemade dish soap. For some of you that care about the environment, making things by hand or making local, maybe you care about your health, and that's one of the main reasons why we're trying to make all our own cleaning products, which I'll hopefully go into and show you throughout this podcast. I just wanted to briefly go over what toxic chemicals to be concerned about that are normally in something as simple as Dawn soap. Here is the ingredients and their concerns. I will try to pronounce them, but these chemicals are crazy. The first ingredient is methocyazoline. It is a high concern for acute aquatic toxicity with some concern about skin irritation and allergies and skin damage. It includes fragrance, which is an industry term for secret, non-disclosed ingredients. So they don't have to tell us at all what's in there. So it could cause skin irritation and allergies, and it could be toxic, and it could cause respiratory side effects, and it could biodegrade in a bad way for the environment. We have no idea. One of the crazy killers that's in almost every single soap product or on the market is sodium lauryl sulfate. It is a chronic aquatic toxicity. It causes damage to DNA, respiratory effects, developmental endocrine reproductive effects, nervous system effects, digestive system effects, acute aquatic toxicity, cancer, damage to vision. Is that really what you want to be washing your dishes with? Are they really clean for your children after using those products? Not in my opinion. These chemicals are now being found in children while they're still in the womb. One in three women are contracting cancer. The rates go up if you're a stay-at-home mom who cleans with a lot of these products. So the first thing that you need is going to be a half a cup of grated Castile soap. We looked everywhere and this seems to be the most affordable, plain, non-toxic, uh, plant-based Castile soap, Kirk's Castile. And you can order it straight from them. Let's grate away. Here we go. Well, I'd like to say we've never done this before. About a half a cup. So the next thing we're gonna need is four cups of water. So I'm just gonna put it in a big pot. One, and four. Okay, so we have heated our soup that I was stirring it the whole time. It took less than five minutes, but it cooled down a little bit. Then you want to add two tablespoons of lemon juice, which helps it cut through the grease. Vinegar works even better. I would recommend a funnel for this job, but we don't own one, so it's gonna be a little silly. I'm going to use a ladle. This ladle in particular has these little things that help it go. Well, that doesn't work. But I always say, if at first you don't succeed, do it the way your wife told you to. Much less wasteful. I think it's worth mentioning that this recipe made this full thing of soap and this. So if you only have one or the other, you might want to consider making this recipe in half. And we're going to finish up with making the dish soap work. We're going to clean a dish. This used to have a bunch of soup in it that we made and we used an old chicken carcass so it's really greasy. So let's see if this homemade soap Cut through all this grease. Just splash water on my computer, that's probably not good. Voila! Homemade dish soap cleans greasy things. There's no need to buy commercially bought chemical filled dish soap. One more thing I'd like to mention is that this dish soap will be thinner 
and not as bubbly as your store-bought dish soap because it doesn't have chemical foaming agents in it. But it cleans dishes just fine. Bubbles do not mean clean. It's just marketing. This soap bottle is P-E-T-E. -E. That's polyethylene terephthalate. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Would you really want something you can't pronounce in your home? But more worrisome, that it is an endocrine disruptor. This tricks your body into producing hormones, often of the opposite sex. This can cause cancer, this can cause sterility, bad stuff. So please submit your ideas on alternative storage, hopefully non-toxic, non-plastic, and maybe something that's already around that we can reuse or find at a thrift store. So uh, help me solve this dilemma and I would greatly appreciate it.